first off, I'd like to thank all the people who got me started in 3D printing, some amazing YouTubers here. And with that, let's jump into the video. This is for all you artists out there, you 3D artists, 3D sculptors. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is when you sculpt a model, you need, and it's almost a separate art form, you need to be sculpting with 3D printing in mind. And so what do I mean by that? So let's look at this Shark Rider here, which is an amazingly gorgeous model, I think, a hammerhead Shark Rider. And, but let's, let's take a quick look at these teeth. The way these teeth are sculpted, every single tooth point there is floating, if I orient it this way, which means every single one of those needs a support. Okay, so let's, moving on, let's look at some other aspects of the model. If I wanted to, the bottom teeth are the same as the top. So if I orient it any way but uh, sideways, basically, I'm going to have to support either the top or the bottom teeth with a ton of supports, which is a little bit annoying. So as an artist, you should look at that and say, hey, I want really cool teeth. You can sculpt material in behind it, pack it in a little bit, or you can make each tooth kind of extend back to the back of the mouth, because when we paint it, you wouldn't see that. Now let's look at something like chains. If you make chains with holes and these little ridges, every single link and every single little ridge there now needs an extra support. So each of those links needs three supports. To me, that's that's looks great, but it's bad design in terms of 3D printing because no matter how I orient this chain, it's going to need every one of those links is going to need those three supports because there's no way to turn it where you don't need it. Bump, okay, bumpy skin. When you look at bumpy skin, it's going to create islands. If I orient the model kind of flat on the base, almost like it is, it's going to create islands in the back you'll see when we get there if i tilt it left to right it's going to create a ton of islands on on the other side and if i tilt it forward for some strange reason it'll also create a ton of islands in the front so and, and look at this change here by the way now that i'm looking tiny little islands in there where it's almost impossible even using my support techniques it's really tough to get a support in there and sometimes i see islands created where there's no room for support at all which means you've got auto fail or auto resin curing in your vat or even worse uh, stuck to the FEP or part of the model that then gets pressed back down into your FEP and possibly damage your LCD screen. So now we're looking at the back. Almost every single one of these scales or protrusions here is creating an island. I mean, it's an absolute mess to support, and you must support all of those. Will it print if I don't? It might print, but again, cured resin floating in the vat, resin stuck to your FEP, whatever it is, it's really bad. So if I turn it, if I start turning it up, or to the side, like I said, it's just going to create more islands in the opposite orientation from where I do that. So I can spin this model around. I can't see a good orientation where I won't have hundreds of islands on this model. There's literally no way to avoid it because of the way it was sculpted. And again, I respect the artist. It's a great piece of art. But I think this artist is kind of new to sculpting for 3D printers. And you can see it because no matter which way I orient this model, it's tons and tons of islands, very, very hard to print. Now look, I don't want you artists to sacrifice your art uh, to make it 3D printable, meaning you shouldn't lose all your details and make everything pointing up, for instance, so that it prints easy, whatever. But you have to find some balance between your art style and the art you want to create and the, the realities of 3D printing, which are you don't want to create a billion islands for us to have to manually support. I think when I actually printed this model, I think placing my manual supports took me over an hour just for this model. It might have been like an hour and a half by the time I had it all done. And yeah, I'm great at supports. I'm not trying to brag, but I'm really good at supports. And I was able to get this to print and I'll show you the pictures of it. But I think most people, you know, if they're not at my level of, of support practice, there's no way you're gonna, you know, make this thing come out right. And definitely not with auto support. So here's another example of what you artists shouldn't do. Look at the claws here. Super duper thin, super sharp points and pointing straight down. So again, unless I flip the model on its back, I have to obviously put supports at the tip of these claws. And when they're that thin and sharp, it's really hard to get them to hold their definition. In fact, what I do in those cases, after I snip off the support, I usually take my X-Acto knife and I very carefully, since it's so thin, it's easy, I slice a thin layer off and recreate the point basically. Um, but you shouldn't have to do that. So because the tail curves all the way around, almost like a loop-de-loop, Again, all those bumps aren't, no matter which way I orient the model, there's going to be 30 or 40 of those alone that I have to support because they're all going to be facing, they're, you know, they're, there's going to be that many floating no matter which way I turn the model. So to me, gorgeous model. I mean, I really, really love this model. Don't get me wrong. Never, like I said, I'm not putting the artist down at all. It's a beautiful model, but it is a nightmare to print. I, I mean, like an absolute nightmare if you want to support it correctly which if you watch my other videos, any of you out there watching or not artists, you know I, I have to support every island. 
So even auto supporting, you can see auto support at 100% misses half the islands, maybe more. So, you know, like since people use auto supports, you know, so much cured resin floating around or even worse, uh, stuck to the FEP or even worse than that, you know, stuck to the model and then banged back down into your FEP, which could puncture it or damage it or even put too much pressure on your LCD and cause you to lose a few pixels in your LCD screen. So this model is a perfect example of gorgeous art that's absolutely bad for 3D printing. Um, and like I said, if you want to spend an hour and a half, you know, really carefully supporting it, then maybe you can get to where I got, which still wasn't even perfect by my standards, but pretty good. So let me show you uh, how this model actually came out. And, you know, it's hard to argue if it was worth the effort or not, because it was really a lot of work to get this to print out like this. Um, like I said, I think an hour and a half at least of, of, of putting those supports it, it really was kind of a nightmare. But like I said, I do love the artwork. I love the piece. I think if it had been sculpted a little differently in some spots, it would have been a lot easier to do. And my next example coming up is how an artist can correct something. So on the next model, which I can't show you because it's from a super, super secret Kickstarter coming soon, uh, the artist sent me this, and the skulls attached to this hero, uh, you can see every single tooth is floating. So I have this picture and then this picture. You can see all basically five or six teeth on each skull are floating. So I told the artist you can't have this. Fix it. The artist did a great thing. The artist came back and just joined those teeth to the leg. Now as you see as I mouse over it, no more island for every tooth. It's going to print fine. So this is an example for your artist what you should do. Instead of having the teeth floating, attach them to the leg if it's something like that. Now there's still one little island, you know, off the right cheekbone, I think it was, but that's fine. I'd rather put one support there than 15 supports. There it is right there. That one I can get an ultra light in. It's only got to support a few pixels. It's not a big deal. So that, that's where, how an artist can fix uh, the problem of teeth hanging down. That's just one example of it. Now we're going to move on to a really, really cool model by Duncan Shadow Luca. This is his uh, Chimera coming up. So on his Chimera which again, I, I think this is a great model. What I'm dropping in first is just the body. There's a huge multi-part model. So we've got the body, which is the lined head and basically the uh, torso, I guess you'd call it. And looking at this, the way it dropped in, uh, this would be good for the teeth. So one of my pet peeves on all models is you really want cool looking fangs. A lot of times the fangs of the teeth might be the fo focal point of a model. So if you, don't support them properly behind the teeth as an artist and that means the the printers like me have a couple of choices print it so the teeth are all horizontal and don't need supports which means we need supports in a lot of other places or print it kind of standing up and then we have to support all those top teeth carefully so here you see because of fur and fur is another one you have to keep in mind it no matter which way you orient fur unless it's all going the exact same direction you're going to create a bunch of islands for us to support now Again, due to art, this might be fine because there's, you know, there's only so many ways you can sculpt fur. So we're going to have some islands no matter what, but we're going to talk about it a little bit more. So here's the teeth. I have them horizontal. If you curve your teeth too much as an artist, then even horizontal, they're going to need some support. So make sure they're not too curved where even horizontal, uh, the tips come down further. So here I'm just showing that on the beard area here, whatever you call that, lots of supports. And if I orient it this way, I need a ton of supports all over this model. Every one of those big scale things needs supports. Uh, every piece of fur now pointing down needs supports. Um, I'm going to have a lot of supports in visible places on the model, uh, which I normally don't like. So I'm looking at this, trying to decide, do I want to do this just to preserve the teeth, or am I maybe better off orienting it um, in its natural kind of top to bottom state and just supporting those teeth and hoping it comes out? Because here, again, I'm looking at all the islands on this fur that I'm going to have to support. And those are going to be in some very visible areas. And if I damage the tips of those fur, it might be noticeable. So I'm just going to flip the model around a little bit, take some looks at it, and see if I think there's a better way to uh, do it. You know, like I said, once I go off the that kind of vertical, then I'm going to have to support teeth. So let me, this looks okay. Maybe I'll rotate so it's truly, the head itself is truly kind of in the vertical plane. Um, and that looks, it's like it's, eh. I'll go right about there, I guess. So now I know I have to support all the teeth. Hopefully if I do it very carefully, uh, they won't take much damage. They should print out okay. And I know that that means I still have a lot of downward facing fur. Because again, with fur, if it's, I guess, sculpted 
you know, somewhat realistically, you're going to have downward facing points, no matter how you orient the model. But the point of this video is to show you artists what not to do. So, okay, granted around the face, I'll give you for art style, you have to do it. But what I really want to talk about in this video is where you don't have to do it to save your art style. And that is underneath the model. So when we look at the belly here, okay, and I understand Duncan wanted to put some detail down here and I don't blame him for it. He's an artist. This is, this is art. But when you create it with undulations and some points lower than others, what it actually creates is every one of those low points down there becomes a new island that we have to support. And every ridge in the fur, if it's cut deep enough, also creates a new island we have to support. So when looking at it from the side here, this is the underside of the model that I probably won't even really see. So I appreciate Duncan's attention to detail, but do we need ripples there and ridges? Because now I need to support all those extra, um, but you won't see that detail when it's models printed and it's on a base unless you pick it up and squint at a really weird angle and try to see underneath it. So I would, I would argue that all you artists looking at this, if you want to have some detail at the bottom, just make sure that it's not severe enough detail that look at the islands it's created. You want to make sure any undulations are not enough that it creates new low points on the model. And any ridges you carve in a fur like this, see on the second level, level here, you see no islands, that's fine. But on that first level, right by the middle ridge, it's a lot more severe and you see that it creates a bunch of islands. So my advice to artists when you're doing this, again, you're gonna create islands no matter what you do, especially if you're trying to make a really nice looking piece. That's a given, so you know, don't try to eliminate all islands, it's not feasible. But on the underside of a model where you really won't see it, try to minimize your undulations, ridges, and detail that, you'll, that no one's ever gonna see, and all it's gonna do is create hassles and problems for us as 3D printers. So, on this model, now you're looking close up. When I print the model out, this area is so small, you can actually barely see all this detail anyway. Um, again, if you, were, if you were looking at the model in this direction, you'd see it, but once it's, okay, here I did, just to show you, I did auto support at 100%, and you'll see there's a ton of islands unsupported. So you already should know, like and most, a lot of people, not most, a lot of people, they'll still use auto supports. And if you give them a model like this and they auto support it, they're gonna have tons of either cured resident floating in their vat, or stuck to their FEP, or even worse, stuck to part of the model and then banging into the FEP. So you as an artist need to know, you don't want to create something that, you know, your, your people print it out and it looks pretty good, but then their next print fails because of it, or their FEP is damaged because of it. So as artists, you really have to focus these days. If you're sculpting for a 3D printing audience, try to start tailoring your sculptures uh, to maximize printability and minimize errors. And again, I'm going to reiterate again. Don't sacrifice your heart style. I'm not saying print the square block so it has nothing hanging down. But just be cognizant that when you do sculpt something that, and many things going in different directions, effectively some of them will be what I call hanging down or floating. You just need to be aware of what you're creating and that people are gonna have to get supports to that point or those points. So you also wanna do it, you don't wanna do it like I showed you on the Shark Rider model. One of those chain links had an island that was so close to the rest of the model you couldn't possibly put a support in there. Uh, I don't think so you don't want to do that. So now I have to support these teeth. That's fine Look if you do teeth and fangs, I still do advise if you can pack material behind it I look at it this way as a painter and printer if you pack m Some extra material in behind it. So those won't be islands I'll paint the front of it white so it looks like teeth and then the material you put behind it I'm gonna paint whether they're pinkish dark red whatever black to, to separate it from the front part anyway. So it's still, you know, people will see teeth in the mouth. They won't say, oh, that tooth goes back three whole millimeters into the back of the mouth. We can disguise that with painting or even worse case, if we want to, after it's printed out, I could go with my exacto and scrape out some extra material if you put some material there, but it will make the teeth easier for me to print, um, you know, without sacrificing your art style. So my advice on, on teeth and fangs, if you can, first of all, make sure they're all touching each other so each one's not just totally out there. And then if you can, support it with material going behind it in some fashion so it's easier to print. And never make them too, too curved that, if you make them too, too curved, even if someone wants to print them horizontally, if they're very curved, they're still gonna be downward pace, facing tips, which is bad. So okay, I hope you artists have paid attention. I hope you're really learning something because we know this is a relatively new world of 3D sculpting for 3D printers, uh, for people printing at home. So you want to make this viable for our home printers. So just please uh, heed this advice and, and concentrate when you're sculpting as best you can without sacrificing art style on minimizing the problems we are printing and knowing what they are will help you minimize them. 
right? And if you have test printers, even better, you send it to someone like me, I put it in my slicer, and then I email you back and say, change these 20 things, which is a pain in the ass, but that's what a lot of artists do with me now anyway. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me uh, actually show you how this model turned out, because I think I did preserve the teeth pretty well. That's my only worry point, was supporting the teeth, you know, in this orientation. And of course, you can't see the bottom where I had all those supports, and I think it came out pretty good. So it's a great piece of artwork from Duncan Shadow Luca. I'm not knocking him at all. He's an amazing artist, and most of his pieces are actually designed uh, with printability in mind. Look, look at the wings here. Those, I think he designed those totally to be printable, and they really were. It was just the underside of the belly of the lion part that, that bothered me. So anyway, I hope all you artists and anyone else who happened to watch learned something about this, and I hope it helps you adjust your sculpting style to make you a better artist uh, for your consumers. So please like, please subscribe, and please stay tuned. I've got future videos on this, including for you artists, some more tips on how to sculpt certain parts of models. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.